Okay, let's now start working on solving the weapon clipping issue. And as the first thing, we want to move the initial field of view initialization out of the constructor and into the begin play. I made a mistake last time, so and as the next thing, we want to make the desired horizontal field of view a variable we can change in the editor. And for this, I will move it from here and I will put it into the header and I will make it possible to edit it anywhere and if we compile we should have a new setting under the mesh field of view component. So let's open up the blueprint mesh. Let's put it at 70. Yeah, I think this should be enough to test. Yeah. Now we can start solving the issue. So first let's create a new folder and we will call it materials. And inside of here we want to create a material function and we will call it mf underscore depth scale. I will explain this um, step by step. So first what we want to do is we want to get the near plane position. And for this I will just first write the code and then I will explain step by step what is going on there. So we will start by getting the, the camera relative world position, which gives us the vertex position relative to the camera position. Then we need to get the camera direction vector, which is the world space vector of the camera direction. Then we want to normalize relative position so that we have a direction. We want to dot those two together. Then we want to divide like so, multiply. And here we want to get a custom node. And in the custom node, we want to write view dot near plane and it's just one float and we can rename it from custom to near plane. So this will give us the near plane clipping distance and this is how we get the near plane position. And now I will try to explain this what is going on geometrically. All right so for this example let's assume that we are in 2D and our camera origin is here and the camera direction is pointing upwards. The near plane is five units away from the camera in the in direction the camera is pointing to. And we have a vertex which is up here. And in a graph, this is the camera relative world position. So this is the vertex position. And we normalize it and we get a direction vector which is pointing from the camera origin towards the vertex. As the next step, we take the dot product between these two vectors. And with the dot product, we are essentially checking how similar two vectors are to each other. So if the dot product is exactly one, it means that the two vectors are pointing in the exact same direction, so that the vertex direction in this case would be zero, one. If the dot product is greater than, than zero, it means that the two vectors are pointing in the same general direction. If the dot product is zero, it means that, that the vertex direction is orthogonal to the camera direction. And if it is below zero, it means that it is pointing in the opposite direction. So it would point somewhere down here. And you can also do projection with a dot product. And as next step, what we do is we do a component wise division of this, of this vertex direction by the dot product. So we divide 0.7 by 0.7 and 0.7 by 0.7. So we get a vector which is 1, 1 and it will end up here. So it will look something like this. And you may wonder why we are doing this. So essentially what we are doing here is we are snapping the vertex direction to a plane which is located at the end of the camera direction vector. So no matter where this vector would have been, would have pointed to, by dividing it by the dot product, it will always end up with its end point on this plane. So for example, if we would have a normalized vector, which is pointing, for example, in this direction, by dividing it by the dot product, it would always point somewhere here on this plane. And we're doing this because the near plane is located exactly five units uh, away from the camera origin. So if we take the camera origin with its length and we add from the camera origin five of those vectors, we will end up on this near plane here. But we can't do the same for a normalized vector. So we can't just multiply this vector by five. We would not be ending up here. We would end up somewhere here. But by clipping it to this plane, so essentially we are making it the same length as this thing so that this 
this vector, if you multiply it by the near plane clipping distance, it will always end up on the near plane. So these two planes here are parallel and by dividing these vectors by dot product, we scale it up essentially so that it lands on the first plane and then we can just multiply it and it will extend to the near plane of the camera. All right, so to show you this, um, if we take this camera direction with its current length and we multiply it by five, it would end up exactly on the near plane. So we would get a, a position which is exactly on the near, near plane. And if you would take, for example, this vector over here, I, I copied it and if I just copy it five times and I put it at the end of each other, so it takes five of those vectors to reach the near plane. And we do this to get a position on the near plane in the vertex direction. And essentially what we are doing here is we are snapping this vertex to the near plane. And that is what is going on over here. And now as the next step, we will scale the vertex position towards the camera. So first let me also put together the code and then I will explain to you what is going on there geometrically as well. All right, so as the first note, we will need the vertex position relative to the camera again. We will need a subtract note and we will subtract the near plane position. We will create another dot product also with the camera direction. We will add a custom note, which will be the following. So we will return the step of X with 0, 0.0 semicolon and it is a float one. We need to name this X. I will explain what this does in a, in a minute. So we have the step, then we need the max amount of the step and then we will need an input parameter. It is a, a scalar and it is the depth scale. We will plug it into here. So we will need a multiply node over here and we will multiply it with the maximum value over here like so and we are done with scaling the depth. So the first thing we do is we subtract the vertex position from the newly created near plane position and we receive a vector which is pointing from the near clipping plane towards the vertex. After that, we create the dot product between this vector and the camera direction. And we are checking with it, essentially, if the vertex is, is in front of the near clipping plane or if it is behind the near clipping plane. And then we pass the dot product as the x to the step function. And what the step function does in our case is that when the dot product is smaller or equal to zero, it will return one if it is bigger than zero, it will return zero. So for all vertices which are in front of the near clipping plane, it will return a one. And for all vertices which are behind the near clipping plane, it will return a zero. And now we take the maximum value out of the value we receive from the step function and a value which we call depth scale. And it is a floating point number between zero and one. So for our example over here, for the step function, we would receive a zero because the vertex is behind the near clipping plane. And let's say that the depth scale would be 0 0.3. So from this, we would receive 0 0.3 as the end result. So we take it and in the next step, we use it to scale this vector by it. So essentially all vertices which are lying behind the near clipping plane, we will scale them by this value over here. And vertices which are lying in front of the near clipping plane, we will scale them by, by one. So we won't scale them at all. All right, and as the last step, we will need an add node. And now we will add to the offset from the near plane towards the vertex. We will add the near plane position as we will scale it. We will move it like this. And next we want to build the actual offset. So at this point we have this vector over here. So we have this entire thing. And now we need to subtract the initial vertex position so that we get the offset. So we say subtract and we want to get the world position relative world position and we feed it inside the output and now we can save it now we can hit apply and save 
and this is I, I call this the combined stage. And that's basically it. All right, and now we need to plug this into our material, FP weapon materials, FP gun. And now what we need to do is we will first call a material function and we want to call the depth scale. We will need to pass it a scalar value. Let's call it depth scale. Let's put it to one. Detach this. We will say we want to set material attributes and we want to add the world offset, the world position offset to it. We will plug this in here and we will pass it to the material attributes. Save. So you see nothing changed and if we hug the wall and we look up and down, we are still clipping into it. But now we can go into this material and we have this parameter which we can also tune. And I will put it to 0.1. Hit play, the weapon didn't change. Now we hug the wall and see there, it worked. It no longer does clip into the wall. This looks so beautiful, except for the shadows, which are still messed up, but we will solve this issue in the next video. And now we have this value over here, which we can tweak, um, experiment with it and make sure that it doesn't get too small. Otherwise you will get some weird artifacts. So play around with it until the weapon does not clip into the world anymore and don't go too small with it as well. And, and that's about it. So I hope you learned something. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that I explained it so that you understood what is going on here. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.